Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here on this Sunday. You gotta see this. Look at that. A nice pillow of snow up there. This is Revelstoke up there in interior British Columbia, and they got absolutely nailed up there. Uh, and not done yet. There's additional snow in the forecast, all part of this storm system. Uh, pretty large, low pressure with a front ahead of it, and a lot of wind as well, but uh, just awesome to see that. Let me take you to radar and show you this thing. So there is your push of snow. Look at that up there into uh, ranges of interior BC from Powder Highway all the way up into uh, Revelstoke. And then some of that's probably making it over into Alberta as well towards the Banff area. And then you've got your area of low pressure behind it. So out ahead of it, we're going to have a lot of wind. And that's going to blow through Montana, at Wyoming, northern Utah, and Colorado over the next 24 hours. This is probably the most precipitation, the most loaded the storm system is going to be. As it moves down into the interior Rockies, it's probably going to dry up and lose some of this precip. So not all of what you see here is going to hold together. But I mean, look at that. That is just outstanding to see that snow up there uh, at Rebel Stick. It looked like it was going to be a good period, and it, uh, it's verifying. Um, let me show you my bullet points here, and uh, so what we've got to, uh, to look forward to. So again, there's our storm system today into the 20th. There's your snow for BC above 5,000. At some some points, it may drop lower than that. It looked like it could drop lower, um, especially in the late night, early morning hours. Now, as it uh, blows into Colorado, Wyoming, I mean, we're looking at 80, 90 mile an hour winds. It could even be stronger. The winds could be up to 95 mile per hour, uh, miles per hour over parts of Rocky Mountain National Park in Colorado, Longs Peak, the Indian Peaks. It's just going to be a windy afternoon today, tonight, and tomorrow in those areas. Then we're going to deal with some tropical remnants uh, coming into the four corners. Doesn't look major, but that'll probably drop some light snow accumulation across the four corners. I'll show you that coming up. And then we're still on atmospheric river watch on or after 1024, but I'll tell you what I'm seeing here this morning it doesn't quite look as intense and that's definitely shown in some of the forecasts but one of the changes i'm seeing that it may even if it's a lower level river it may get extended out longer with surges of that pineapple express coming in maybe even to the first of november so it could be an extended period here are the best odds of snow for Colorado, Utah, Wyoming, Montana, and Interior BC, there's your snow for Interior BC, and then another period, 1023 through 1026. So it's looking really good there. Um, okay, here is your water vapor satellite imagery. It's very obvious to see the big area of low pressure and the intense push of moisture into BC, even over the range into parts of uh, Western Alberta. The dry air is down here in the blacks, the oranges, and the reds, so really just waiting. So again, the leading edge of this front is going to move down on sort of a northwest flow pattern through the Intermountain um, over the next 24 hours. So that's how it's going to shake out across the west. Looking at the forecast radar, so we'll start this early today. I just wanted to kind of show you where it's at. There's your leading edge of the front. There's your big precip push into interior BC. And as this arrives in Wyoming, in southwest Montana, that's going to be snow and wind across the higher peaks. So, And it could be several inches of snow accumulation. Let me roll this into the future. So there's a lunch hour. I mean, look at that slam. This will be interesting to watch as it slams into the Tetons, Yellowstone and the Wind Rivers, and of course, Absaroki Beartooth Wilderness there in parts of uh, Montana. So that's on its way. Here's the dinner hour. Colder air will come in behind it. Boy, that definitely, you can see the form with this front. It's very obvious. And it does clip very briefly the Wasatch and the High Uintas. It's going to be windy there, too. But then it will blow on into Colorado. And this is mostly snow behind it over, of course, the high peaks. Here's the early morning hours on uh, Monday, and notice how it dries up. So, you know, again, we're really looking at the peak precipitation rates right now, and then it dries up. There's the lunch hour on Monday. It's largely gone. Now it's a waiting game. Here we are early on Tuesday. What's next, right? Well, we've got high pressure here for a few days. Um, I'm just rolling this ahead. Here are the early morning hours on Wednesday. Now, this is when we start to see a little bit of that, uh, that uh, residual 
uh, tropical moisture coming in. In fact, you can see it right there. So that's going to creep its way through on uh, probably 22, 23 through a lot of the four corner states with rain and snow, depending on your elevation. All right, here's the uh, the middle of the atmosphere, looking it up at about 18,000 feet, atmospheric pressure anomalies. Um, so this is effective today, and, and there's our storm system by the end of today. And there's your front right there. And look at the bending of, the, of those pressure lines. Um, definitely, oh, and there's that tropical system right there that's going to get drawn in later. But that's going to produce a lot of wind, like I was saying. Okay, let's go into 1023. This is Thursday. So there it is. There's the remnant tropical low coming through 2223 through the four corners, and then it will dissipate. Well, it'll actually take a right-hand turn and kind of roll down and away. But that's kind of a two-day event there. Again, it doesn't look major for the four corners, but nonetheless, something interesting in the flow. Here we are on 1026. Now, we're into the atmospheric river potentially at this point, and you can kind of see it. It's pretty obvious nosing in with a big area of low pressure and a powerful jet roaring in. Uh, the question is, even though we've got significant pressure drops here and a strong jet, let me see if I can find it, um, how much moisture will actually get thrown in? So we're on river watch, and it may start as early as 1024, but I mean, look at this 170, 180 mile an hour jet absolutely just knifing into the west coast and some of that moisture gets thrown in and overruns the interior utah nevada idaho wyoming and colorado so they're going to be the beneficiaries of this as well as long along with california and the west coast i mean that's a powerful jet guys reaching all the way back into the uh, and here it is i mean you can really see it happening we call this the pineapple express so the key features here look for these greens these yellows and even those little tiny little dots of red you're looking at water vapor in the total column here and so this is atmospheric moisture this is how you really spot um the the ar the atmospheric river and so the point here is right at the start so you know you've got one surge uh, there's another surge, there's another surge. So potentially three different surges on the Pineapple Express from about 1024 into 111. The real question is, what's the intensity going to be? Now today, the intensity is down on the forecast. Yesterday, we were way up here. Today, we're down here into that weak to moderate category. And again, this is just the first surge here, 1024, 25, 26. The question, this is integrated vapor transport, so what will the intensity be with this? You often see these fluctuations. So this is not set in stone. You know, we're still days out from this, but you can see the fluctuations up and down with this. It's not unusual to see, so we'll have to watch and see where we end up on this. Here's the five-day snow forecast across the West. It does not take into account, it may just barely take into account the start of that first surge on the 24th. But you can see a little bit of snow up and down the west coast, the high peaks, the Cascades, and the high Sierra. There's your snow in Colorado, uh, a combination of the front that's going to come through over the next 24 hours, plus remnant tropical moisture. And then you've got anywhere you see the purple pink that's over six inches, and you've got numerous pockets of that in Wyoming, Montana, Idaho. And look at the big snow up here in the parts of interior BC, coastal range, Revelstoke, and beyond. Um, let's zoom in on that. So into Wyoming, Montana, a little bit of Montana, Idaho, uh, Utah, Colorado, um, over a little, uh, potentially a little bit over six inches there um, as that snow slams into a lot of Yellowstone, the Tetons, and the Wind Rivers. Potentially up to maybe one, two inches there in Utah, so nothing major over the next five days. Maybe up to six inches here in Colorado. You can see one little pocket there of some of that magenta color. Um, let's see, let's go into Montana here. Five day snow forecast, definitely 6 to 12 up here in Glacier. Uh, pockets of 6 to 12 up into BC. Pockets of 6 to 12 into Idaho. And there's your potential 6, 7, 8 inches up into northwest parts of, uh, of Wyoming. Into Colorado, five day snow forecast. Yeah, you've got some pockets of 6 inches there. Mostly, though, it's kind of a 1 to 4. But uh, again, that's just kind of the combination of two different events coming through Colorado. Here's how that looks on the snow plume. Let's go back up to Jackson. We've been tracking Jackson here for about the last four days. 
uh, a little bit of an acceleration up next 24 hours with the front a bigger one right there 24 25 26 27 you'd be the beneficiary of what would be that uh, that atmospheric river and this generates about a foot of snow uh, with the air bars up at around 14 16 uh, and this is a ensemble mean for Jackson Wyoming so things definitely start to get more active in Jackson let's do um, let's do Denver if I can find the plume for Denver here it is so again we talked about this the last few days the more active period is right here towards the end of the month around Halloween for the Denver area bring in some colder air bring in potentially maybe an inch of snow here air bars are up around three or four inches but um, the ensemble means about one one and a half for the Denver metro area so nonetheless by the end of the month um, closer to Halloween things definitely turn colder and more active for uh, Denver uh, but guys a lot to talk about here we've got a number of different things going on from fronts to tropical moisture to the atmospheric river uh, in fact let me end on this is such a cool animation we'll end on this and you can really see the potential for you know maybe up to three different AR surges with the Pineapple Express through uh, November 1st. All right, take care and appreciate you guys tuning in here and have a great day.